Let's solve problem 4.22 from Microelectronic Circuits 8th edition, Cedra and Smith. The following measurements are taken on particular junction diodes for which V is the terminal voltage and I is the diode current. For each diode, estimate values of IS and the terminal voltage at 10% of the measured current. Right, so we have this diode and it's driving some current I and it has a terminal voltage V. And this problem is really trying to demonstrate the current to voltage relationship for a diode. So typically at around 0.7 volts for a diode, it will start to draw a little bit of current. So right about here. And as we surpass 0.7 volts, the current will increase exponentially usually. And so this is taken from this very common equation. Diode current is equal to source current times E to the power of our voltage across the diode divided by our thermal voltage, where thermal voltage, Vt, is equal to 25 millivolts or 0 0.025 volts. It's just a semiconductor property. And Is is our source current. So using that information, we can find the value of Is for part A. So we know I, it's one amp. We're solving for Is, and it's going to be multiplied by E to the power of V, which is 0 0.75 volts, divided by 0 0.025 volts. So we can just divide this exponential function to the left side of the equation, and we will end up with Is is equal to 1 amp, divided by E to the power of 0 0.75 volts, divided by 0 0.025 volts. This is equal to 1.069 times 10 to the negative 13 amps. It's a very small current, and this is actually what we would expect. Your source current will typically be very, very small. Now, to estimate the terminal voltage at 10% of the measured current, so if we're estimating this new terminal voltage and we're decreasing the current, we would expect the voltage to be less. So what we can do is just take I and divide it by 10, because that would be 10% of the current. And we can set this equal to our source current, which we just calculated times E to the power of our diode voltage multiplied by or sorry, subtracted with our drop in voltage. On this graph, it would be the drop in voltage divided by thermal voltage. And you can take the ratio of this equation. Um, you can say that I over 10 is also equal to source current times e to the power of the diode voltage divided by thermal voltage, also multiplied by e to the power of the negative change in voltage divided by Vt. And you can keep doing this algebra, and eventually you should get that 10 is equal to e to the power of the change in voltage divided by the thermal voltage. And this is going to be the same across every part, A, B, C, and D. So you can get that the change in voltage is equal to thermal voltage times natural log of 10, where the thermal voltage is this 25 millivolts, and so we get 60 millivolts. Now that's the change in voltage, so the new voltage, which we'll call V0, is equal to 0.75 volts minus 60 millivolts and that is equal to 0 0.69 volts so these are our answers for part a now let's continue with part b All right so solve part b so we have v is equal to 0 0.65 volts and that is equal to 1 milliamp so we can set up this equation so we have 1 milliamp is equal to our source current times e to the power of the voltage, 0 0.65 volts divided by 0 0.025 volts. And then we can say 
just by dividing the exponential function to the left side of I s our source current is equal to 1 milliamp divided by e to the exponential function of 0 0.65 volts divided by 0 0.025 volts so we get that i s is equal to 5.11 times 10 to the negative 15 amps and then our terminal voltage at 10% of the measured current using the same derivation that I did with part of problem A, our new voltage V0 is equal to the original voltage minus 60 millivolts, which is equal to 0 0.59 volts. All right, let's carry on with part C. V equals 0 0.65 volts and I is equal to 10 microamps. So again, we just say IS is equal to our current, just deriving from this formula up here, is equal to our current 10 microamps divided by E to the power of the voltage, 0 0.65 volts, divided by the thermal voltage, 0 0.025 volts. And that is equal to 5.11 times 10 to the negative 17 amps. Then our new voltage will equal our original voltage, 0 0.65 volts minus delta V, which is 60 millivolts. And that is equal to 0 0.59 volts. And lastly, let's solve part D. V equals 0 0.7 volts and A equals 10 milliamps. So we say IS is equal to the current 10 milliamps divided by E to the power of the voltage divided by the thermal voltage. This is equal to 1.069 times 10 to the negative 14 amps. And then our new voltage is 0 0.7 volts minus 60 millivolts, which is equal to 0 0.64 volts. So a little bit repetitive, but hopefully you understood this problem.